In this movie, I'll show you how to fit this line of headline type so that it exactly fits the width of the margin guide. All right, so I'll go ahead and switch to my illustration in progress. And I'll click on this top line of type and press shift down arrow a couple of times in order to nudge it down and give myself a little more room. All right, so I'm gonna start things off with a couple of very useful keyboard shortcuts for adjusting the size of your text. And for these to work, your text has to be selected with the type tool. So I'll go ahead and double click inside the text like so in order to automatically switch to the type tool and position my blinking insertion marker. And then I'll select all the type in this text object. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the select menu and choose the all command or easier still, you can press Control A or Command A on the Mac. Now let's say I'm not exactly sure what type size I'm looking for. I could just click inside of this type size field and press the up arrow key in order to increase the type size or the down arrow key to reduce it. I can also press Shift along with an arrow key to move in 10 point increments. But there's another way of working and to take advantage of it, I'll press the escape key so the type size value is no longer highlighted. And then I'll press control shift period. That's command shift period on the Mac to incrementally increase the size of my type. And the reason it's period is because the period key also features the greater than sign on an American keyboard. If you want to reduce the size of your text, you press control shift comma or command shift comma, which is the same as control shift or command shift less than sign. If you want to move in bigger increments still, then you can add the Alt or Option key. And so this is the result of pressing Control Shift Alt greater than sign or Command Shift Option greater than sign on the Mac. Whereas this is what happens when you press Control Shift or Command Shift less than sign. All right, well, however you get there, we want to end up increasing the type size until it's 40 points, as we're seeing up here in the control panel. Now what I want to do is take advantage of a command under the type menu called fit headline, but currently it's stemmed and that's because it doesn't work with point type. You have to first convert your text to area type and you do that by pressing the escape key in order to escape the text entry mode. And then you bring back your bounding box by going to the view menu and choosing show bounding box, or you can press control shift B or command shift B on the Mac. And now you can go over here to this little widget and double click on it like so, and that will convert your text to area type, at which point you can go ahead and make it wider so that the text frame fits the entire width of the margin guide. All right, that still doesn't quite take care of our problem. Notice here under the type menu, fit headline is still dimmed. And that's because I need to perform one more step, which is to double click inside the text in order to automatically switch to the type tool. And then with just that blinking insertion marker sitting there and nothing more, go up to the type menu and choose the now available fit headline command. And that will increase the amount of horizontal space between the letters in order to fit the width of the margin guide. All right, now I'm gonna press the escape key in order to switch back to my black arrow tool. And I'm gonna press control shift B or command shift B on the Mac to hide that bounding box. All right, now I wanna change the color of my text and color is a character level formatting attribute, just like font and style and size and so forth. But you're not gonna find it here inside the character panel. Instead, you just wanna go ahead and bring up the swatches panel, which you can do by going to the window menu and choosing the swatches command, unless of course it already has a check mark in front of it, in which case the swatches panel is already on screen. And notice that I have all these global swatches that came in along with my text. And I'm gonna get rid of them by selecting black 11 right here and then shift clicking on blue to select all the global swatches. And then to get rid of all of them without a warning, I'll alt click or option click on the little trash icon and they will disappear. And now I'll make sure my fill is active as I can see it is in the top left corner of the swatches panel, at which point I'll select this dark shade of red, which is R193 G39 B45 and that will recolor the text as we're seeing right here. All right, now I wanna further adjust the amount of horizontal space between my characters. And notice if I go ahead and zoom in here, that while the amount of horizontal space between, let's say the D and the E in the word Denslow looks just fine, we have way too much space between the W and the period. And that's a function of what's known as kerning. So basically every single character of type has its own spacing metrics built in. 
But every once in a while, two neighboring characters don't really go together very well, in which case they become a kerning pair that Illustrator is designed to modify automatically. But right now we have the kerning turned off. And so what you need to do is go ahead and marquee these top two lines of type, taking care not to accidentally select any of the body copy. So make sure you're not seeing any purple lines as I'm seeing when I hover over that text. And then go up to the character panel and notice this option right here. It's the one that affects the kerning. And you can see right now it's set to zero, which means that all kerning pairs are being ignored. What you wanna do is click on this down pointing arrowhead and at the very least select auto, which is gonna look up the kerning information that's built into each and every font. And you can see that took care of our spacing problem quite nicely. Another option is to go with optical. And optical tells Illustrator to automatically evaluate the shape of each and every character in a selection and adjust the spacing accordingly. And you may find that it really works wonders on display type, which is why I'm going to choose optical in a case of my selected text. And then I'll press the escape key to hide that panel. All right, I wanna do one more thing and that's to zoom out a little bit so that I can see more of my text at a time. And then I'm gonna click on this point text right here, the one that represents the bylines. And now I wanna space these characters out a little more. And so I'll once again click on a word character and switch from the kerning option to its next door neighbor, which is tracking. And tracking is essentially kerning for multiple characters at a time. And so for example, if I change this tracking value to 100, let's say, I'm gonna really space those characters out from each other, which is why in the end, I came up with a tracking value of 40, like so. All right, now I'm gonna press Control Zero or Command Zero on the Mac in order to zoom out so that I can take in my entire document. And it seems to me that this top line of text could be spaced a little bit better. And so what I'm gonna do is double click inside of it again in order to switch to the type tool and position that blinking insertion marker. And I'm gonna choose type fit headline. And you may wonder, well, why are you choosing that command again, Deke? Well, the fact is you might've seen a shift on screen there. I have done a better job of filling up the width of the margin job. And that's because switching to optical kerning made a difference in the amount of horizontal space, which means that it was worth visiting the fit headline command a second time, just to make sure everything's the way it needs to be. At which point I'll press the escape key in order to switch back to the black arrow tool and I'll click off my text to deselect it. And that's how you automatically adjust the amount of horizontal space between characters of type using a combination of the fit headline command along with optical kerning here inside Illustrator.